This is how you make a jack o' lantern. Well, that's how you make a jack o' lantern. This is how this I make a jack o' lantern. Mighty fine jack o' lantern. Welcome back. This is Stockman Original. I'm Max Ledoux, and this is the original <laughs> Stockman. Brian, welcome to the tribe. Today, we're going to be doing pumpkin carving because it seems appropriate for this time of year. Happy Halloween. So usually when I do a pumpkin, I just kind of like jab a kitchen knife in there. Cut out a couple triangles, and I get a misshapen, possibly smiling, possibly not. Grimacing. Here's a picture of a jack lantern that Brian carved for me a few years ago. So you can see it's a little bit different. But today, Brian's going to show me and you how to do slightly advanced, but easy to do carving. Uh, most times when I get a chance to carve a pumpkin, I'm like, well, because I'm a wood carver, I've got all these chisels and gouges and things it's like and it's so fun but to do that today wouldn't be fair because we want to encourage you all to do it too <laughs> and a lot of you don't have those kind of tools so we're going to use what you find pretty much in the kitchen we've got basic straight bladed kitchen knives i've sharpened them up a bit i've got a spoon for hollowing out the seeds and so forth this might be a little more extreme than most people have. I was lucky enough to come across a knife that somebody had used, used it and sharpened it down. Now it's the greatest little boning tool. <laughs> huh. But this is be great for uh, tight little circles and so forth. And this is kind of a little off. I took an old spoon. It's just like an antique probably, but I, I sharpened the edge with a file and it's pretty sharp. And I'm going to use that like a gouge. If I was using my carving tool tools, I would be using gouges and things like that. But a spoon is something that, you know, even some cheap stainless steel spoon would be just fine for cutting pumpkins. I wouldn't want to skin a beaver with it, but it'd be fine for pumpkins. Can we sit at this or? <laughs> In the army, they taught us never, ever stand if you can oh. sit. <laughs> And, oh. <laughs> and never, ever, ever sit if you can lie down. <laughs> so, as with any carving project, the best thing to start with is a marker of some sort. Pencil will work. So, I usually start with the eyebrows. This little number kind of establishes the, the brows with the scary pumpkin. Now, I'm going to, I got a nose. A pumpkin nose. These lines will be elaborated on as we go. So just the outline. Outlines of things come. Today is the first day of Halloween. Is it? Yeah. What's the date? Today. Today. <laughs> Today? Yesterday. Yeah. Was the last day of Halloween. <laughs> that works. <laughs> it works like that here. <laughs> basically cutting out our guidelines so that we can see them so you guys can see them. <laughs> Feathered peanut gallery. <laughs> and give yourself plenty of mouth. Yeah, what's going on, guys? <laughs> now what I like to do on the mouth is take away all the skin with a longer blade comes in handy because you can lay it flatter against it. So once I get the skin scun off, like that, then I cut in the corners here rather deep. Cut real deep on the, on the corners here, right straight in. Living. You're squarely in the way. Well, you are the way. I actually, most times, take those corners just about all the way through. For some reason, yours looks all clean and mine's all like ragged. 40 years in the business. Mine just has like cold sores or something. Herpes. There's no bad pumpkin. <laughs> If we do the mouth first, mm. that way the pumpkin can tell us what to do next. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> see, see, see what I'm saying? Why'd you make my nose so big? <laughs> this is where I start putting in the teeth first. Gotta go right through the uh, the wall of the pumpkin into the 
cavity inside where all the little seeds live. <clears throat> Ta-da. You find if you hold your knife like this, mm -hmm. you can lay the heel of your hand on the pumpkin as a as a guide or fulcrum. Generally, I would use a, a wood carving parting tool, a V gouge, to lay out the teeth, and it goes very easily, quickly. I usually start laying the teeth out at the center, come around a little arching, straight down, coming up. Now we're going to come back. Arch back down, like that. Being a jack-o'-lantern, stick a candle in one of these. With a candle, you need some air coming in at the low point and a place for the heat and smoke to go out mm -hmm. on the top. Having his mouth slightly open allows a little bit of breath you can have it quite open if you want yeah now for his bottom teeth like that uh -huh. so again you make that little archy uh swooping cut down at the center So what I like to do at this point is to put in the, the smile lines. I'm going to curl the nostril. This is proof that a carver will carve anything. So that's what I was after. Ah, okay. That leaves lips. I think everybody will notice it changed our location <laughs> it's too sunny down there I can february imagine. will be wondering where the sun is <laughs> so the next phase we're going to do the eyes mm. so we've got the outline kind of just scratched in basically i'm going to go over that first with a deeper cut now, I have taken a moment in between shots to sketch on in pencil my intentions here. So, I, yeah, like this. And I came down off of the brow like that. Okay, to make the, the tear duct corner of the eye. And uh, so that's what I'm going to branch off and follow here. Chickens in the background. <laughs> All right. And so I've made the outside cut. I'm going to leave myself a little circle of like my Jack Lantern is gonna have an eye patch. <laughs> so I didn't have two of them. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is working out good. This is a good opportunity to Cut deep again. So now I'm gonna do the other one just once that one. It looks like it hurts, but it really doesn't. It hurts me more than it hurts you. <laughs> So I'm going to give him bags under his eyes with the sharpened spoon. So I start off with a little V. Because if you've ever carved a pumpkin and had trouble finding the way the lid's supposed to go on, this helps. Okay, you got a little... A little key thing sets right down in there. Like I was saying before, you have to have air coming in to feed the candle, oxygen, 
and you need a little chimney. Let the heat and exhaust out. So you just kind of cut a little square out. Say mm -hmm. start on this side of UV, stick it right in there. And pull it. Yeah, yeah, pull it. You got better control. And if you leave the blade in there, you'll get a clean cut all the way around. And of course you have to so the next phase, of course, is to use a spoon. It's just scraping out seeds. <laughs> what we're doing is basically scraping the seeds and all the membranes that are See? holding the seeds. Huh? Try to pick this up instead of this. Uh -huh. Brains. Yeah. I've been resisting <laughs> referring to it as gutting it out. But. <laughs> All right, got lovely seeds. I like to make a little divot in the bottom for the candle. Max doesn't get this lantern done by Halloween. There won't be any festivities. We'll all start. <laughs> Ooh. Happy Halloween, happy autumn. That's how you make a jack-o'-lantern. Well, that's how you make a jack-o'-lantern. Both just fine. Any way you make a jack-o'-lantern is good. As long as you make a jack-o'-lantern, you gotta make a jack-o'-lantern, mm -hmm. right? So hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, check out some of our other videos, and let us know what else you wanna see. Yeah. We will see you next time. Love Thanks you. for being- Love you comments. Part of the tribe. <laughs> We're out. Stop! Oh, it looks like pretty quick. Burning oh, candles. Thanks for watching.